Hi, and welcome to another WatchGeek video. Today I'll be doing a review of a Bulova 96B210, more commonly known as Accutron 2 Snorkel, as it is a reissue of the 1970s Snorkel Diver. Now the original came with orange and white color combination of the bezel and a shark mesh bracelet. It was also smaller at 41 millimeters or 38 according to some sources. Now although the reissue could also be had in orange and white, I went for this, the black and red, because I wanted to get the coffin bracelet this version comes with, as I'm not a huge fan of the shark mesh. Not only that, but many historic Bulova divers had a black and red or coke color scheme, so this color combo actually fits nicer into their history. Since I bought this watch second hand, as they're no longer available for sale new, I got the shark mesh in the package with the watch. In fact, the previous owner never even used the original coffin bracelet as it still had the protective film wrapped around it. Now, I bought this watch originally to do a video and possibly leave it in my collection if it fit my wrist. As I'm a huge fan of the design of many vintage Bulovas, this one included. Sadly, upon receiving this watch and trying it on, I realized that it's too big for my wrist. I mean, it's not too big in an official way as it sits within my wrist area and there isn't anything sticking out like on really long watches, but despite the overall lug to lug of only 47 millimeters, which is well within my comfort range, the watch wears very big, even for a 43 millimeter watch. It's just too big for my taste. Now if they kept it at the original size, I think it would have been perfect. It also has quite, quite a nice half to it at over 150 grams, which is why I disliked it on the mesh bracelet, as it becomes top heavy while the coffin bracelet with its butterfly clasp balances the watch nicely and gives an even weight distribution. Now speaking of the bracelet, it is one of, the, one of my favorite parts of this watch. It's a massive yet incredibly comfortable, one of the most comfortable bracelets I've had the pleasure of putting on my wrist. It has a beautiful drape and is also wonderfully made with solid links, solid end links and a machined butterfly clasp. It's finished to high polish and features a laser etched Bulova logo. This is one of the highest end bracelets I have seen on a relatively affordable watch. And speaking of butterfly clasp, I just wanted to show you how to properly open and close one, as I often see people on YouTube doing reviews of watches with butterfly clasps and they struggle putting them on the wrist. So they will go and do something like this. Put the watch on the wrist, then turn the wrist around and now they pull one side but the other is hanging and they have to pull the watch up and it always looks like they're pinching their skin while doing it. It's even funnier when they open the clasp as they turn the watch like this and press the release button and the watch just flies downwards very often hitting the table underneath. You just hear this thump and it always cracks me up. Now some people dislike butterfly clasps because of this, while the truth is they're the easiest to open and close of all the clasps if done correctly. So to properly put a watch on with a butterfly clasp, you put it on while your wrist is like this. And then without turning your wrist, you start pushing the middle of the clasp with your index finger towards your wrist and the clasp starts to close evenly on both sides like a bomber plane hatch. As it gets close to your index finger, you take the two sides with your middle finger and your thumb while pulling the index finger out of the way and close the clasp completely. It's as simple as that. So no pinching, no pulling and very easy and fast once you get used to that. So let's do it again, only faster, the way you would do it after getting used to it. And there, as you can see, it's very smooth and fast. Now when removing, you follow the same principle, so you don't turn your wrist around as then pressing the release buttons will make the weight of the watch pull on the clasp making it violently open with the watch hitting any obstacle in its way. Instead, hold your wrist with the watch pointing upwards just like when we were closing it and simply press the release. It will open the clasp but the watch stays on your wrist and now you just remove it. As simple as that. Well, I hope at least someone finds this useful. Now moving on, the case despite being too big for me is wonderfully styled. It's an almost exact copy of the 1970s model and I really like it. It features linear brushing on the top and the sides with this nicely polished bevel in between. The watch features two crowns with the lower one being both a screw down and signed with Bulova logo. That one is used to set the date and time and the watch does have a quick set date function. 
meaning that pulling the crown to the first click allows you to change the date, while pulling it to the second stops the movement so you can set up the time. The upper crown is not a screw down, nor is it signed, and I like that as it's used to operate the internal rotating bezel. If it were a screw down, it would be impractical to use, and not being signed clearly distinguishes it, uh, so you know it's in a way less important than the main crown, which is why that one is signed. Now, despite not being a screw down crown, the watch comes with a 200 meter water resistance, and I haven't had a single accidental movement of the bezel while wearing the watch meaning that the resistance of the bezel is just right, not too tight but also not too loose. The bezel features a colored portion for the first 20 minutes, which is slightly different than the original as that had the first 15 minutes colored. Now the watch comes with a mineral crystal, which for the initial price Bulova was asking for these watches, which was I believe around $550, is not acceptable. It should have come with a sapphire especially since the bezel in, is internal, meaning it cannot get scratched nor cracked. So if they opted for a sapphire, the watch would have looked flawless for years. But at least there's a slight dome that adds to the vintage look, and although I prefer flat crystals because of the increased legibility, on this watch, the dome works and looks great. The dial is black, relatively simple, and the text is kept to a bare minimum, which is something I love. It's very legible and the marker's design matches the hands. The hands are the same as on the original and are nice and long with the only difference being that the second hand has the tuning fork symbol as a counterbalance. All in all a well executed design that I really have nothing bad to say about. The date is at 3 o'clock and done in white, which I think was made to resemble the original from 1970s, although that one had both dates and day of the week. Uh, to be honest, I prefer this layout as it just works better with the dial. And the loom is okay, but nothing to write home about. Now one can argue that the hands and markers are thin and loom area is relatively small, which leads to just an average loom performance, but the fact is that my SNX 111 has almost the same loom area as this, and yet its loom is a lot stronger and lasts longer, so I wish they borrowed some loom from Seiko for this. On the plus side, the bezel triangle and the Bulova logo are both loomed, which does look cool when you can see them. Then we get to the movement, the real star of the show, and also one of the reasons I went and bought this. It's using Bulova's UHF quartz movement, and although quartz is usually associated with a ticking seconds hand while mechanical watches are associated with smoothness, this movement, with its 16 beats per second, or 57,600 beats per hour, puts to shame even the smoothest and most expensive mechanical watches. Now I like to call this a poor man's spring drive as it looks almost as smooth as that. As I already mentioned in my video where I compare different beat rates of watches, and if you want to see that you can click this link right here, now, this movement creates the irony of having to go back to quartz for real smoothness after you just ditched quartz for mechanical watches to get the smoothness of the second hand. Anyways, just like a mechanical watch benefits from increased frequency by having a better accuracy, so does this quartz movement. So although this is not a thermocompensated movement like other high-end quartz movements, it still has an astonishing accuracy of only plus minus 10 seconds a year. The downside of this high beat rate is that the battery life is pretty short, up to two years. But in all honesty, that's a small price to pay for this smoothness and precision. Now in conclusion, I think this is an incredibly well executed reissue of a legendary design, made even more interesting with the UHF movement, ruined only by the big size, at least when it comes to small wristed people like me. Now in the last couple of years, someone at Bulova realized people like how their watches used to look which made them start reintroducing legendary designs, from their moon watch and astronaut model to the chronograph C, space view and this. Now they're un unfortunately all too big compared to their original inspirations, but even that is a step in the right direction, especially compared to what they were making just under a decade ago with the hideous and oversized precisionist line. Now Bulova has so many other incredibly designed watches in their historical catalogs that I really can't wait to see what they bring back next. But until then, I will be browsing the web for their vintage pieces as they were perfect in every way possible. Especially their devil diver, the oceanographer 666, 
that I plan on adding to my collection in the course of the next year. Well, this pretty much concludes the review, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe by pressing this button right here. And until the next video, bye.